Um, Indianapolis ranks 83rd in the country in the size of its public transit system, although we are the 11th largest city in the United States. Would you support allowing central Indiana counties to hold a referendum that lets voters choose a modest local tax increase to pay for improved transit service, including more buses, more frequent service, and a, right, a light rail line? Yes. However, it would have to pass with 100% of the vote. Is that a and yes? I say, what's that? Is that a yes? <laughs> <laughs> it's a yes. And I, it, let me get into this. I, I actually spoke to uh, an Eastside Business Association um, group yesterday, and, and we talked a little bit about this. It, the great thing about living in central Indiana is we don't have pesky things like oceans and, and huge rivers that get in the way of expansion and progress. And Indianapolis has been able to grow in eight different directions. Um, we've also generally had a, a zoning policy that allows for low-density housing and development. However, the problem with that is to have light rail or any sort of public transportation really work and work efficient, efficiently, you have to have high density. And so we have two different notions at work here where most, zoning, most projects that get zoned, they want everybody to have a quarter acre. And they want everybody to be spread out, but I think most people who know anything about public transportation in this room know that anybody who lives more than seven blocks from a stop, well, let me back up. Typically, 90% of the ridership on light rail, bus, whatever, lives within seven blocks of a stop. Any more than seven blocks, people will then get in their car. Once they're in their car, they'll just drive to their destination. So, that being said, I know that I, I've seen the studies on light rail that run just from, well, I think, Central Indiana would probably pass something that says, yes, we'd be in favor of light rail, but everybody has a notion of what light rail is. If you live in Greenwood, your notion is something from downtown Indianapolis to Greenwood. If you live in Zionsville, it's from downtown Indianapolis to Zionsville. But I think if you ask those voters in Greenwood, would you support a tax increase on your taxes for a light rail system that runs Indianapolis to Fishers, they would say no. I hope we get rebuttal because I wanted to get a lot more into this because I have a lot more ideas and a lot more thoughts, but I'm out of time. All right, well, we'll see if we can get a little more time in there for you, no problem. Go ahead, Senator Simpson. I supported the initiative that was before the legislature. I wanted it expanded, however. Uh, because I believe in home rule, uh, I believe in giving all of the tools that we can to local governments. And if uh, local units of government, if communities want to talk about uh, mass transit, improving bus system, light rail, whatever it happens to be, whether it's goods or passengers or whatever, uh, local government ought to have those tools. Uh, that's number one. Number two, I served on the Mass Transit uh, Study Commission a few years ago, and we did a report. I, for, for those of you who remember, in, in the old days, the Department of Highways, and it, the, we changed the name of the Department of Highways to make it transportation because we were hoping that they would think about alternative transportation other than asphalt. Unfortunately, they still, even under the Department of Transportation, they still talk about asphalt. And, um, and there needs to be a much broader approach to the transportation needs. Um, Denver, Colorado is a perfect example of a city that has grown out and there isn't any concentrated population any more than Indianapolis, and they have a wonderful light rail system in Denver, Colorado that serves all of the suburb, suburban, suburban, suburban areas around Denver, and, uh, and, and it, it works very well, and, um, and it uh, is self-supporting. And we're doing very well on time, so um, why don't we give each of you an additional minute to, to add anything else you'd or like to add on, on this. this one. I will say Denver has a mountain range that completely eliminates western suburbs. So you, you do get a concentration along the front line there. Um, but to, to go on with what I was saying, Indianapolis currently is doing a whole rezone Indy program. And this goes back to when I was, I run a little group called the Tavern League of Indiana, and so which basically represents bar owners. And in Indiana we have, there, we, again, we have dissimilar interests. We, we don't want people to drink and drive, but we won't allow for a neighborhood tavern to go in. So we, we've automatically said that people can no longer walk to that tavern. We have the same problem here where, and I'm hoping with this Rezone Indy program that they're doing, a project they're doing, that they're going to allow for some higher concentrations of developments. Uh, 
because I think once we get the population density that we need, it suddenly becomes a viable option. But if everybody's on a quarter acre, it's just not going to work, just because you can't go all the places that people need to go. So I'm not, once again out of time, I could probably go on on, on this for, for a half seconds. an hour. But, but yeah, we, we have the challenges. And it, it, the, one of the problems, I, I saw the numbers on the light rail just from Indianapolis to Fishers. It was going to be a billion dollars to build that line. Projected ridership was going to take, they said, 1% to 2% of the traffic off I-69 and State Road 37. And then, and I don't remember the number of projected riders right now, but I just penciled it out. And at the time, I figured out for the money that they're going to put into that for only to save a third of the cost, they could buy every projected rider a brand-new Chevy Cobalt and buy their gas every three years, and they'd be money ahead. And I just don't think it's a good use of funds to do that. Okay. Thank you. Did you want to add another minute as well? No, I think I made my point. Okay. I, uh, I just, I, I will say that a, the Department of Transportation, before they do any major uh, road installations in the future, should always think about planning for, for light rail as part of the project. Alternative, alternative, uh, transportation as part of any asphalt project. It should be mandatory that at least we do some kind of cost-benefit analysis so that we're thinking ahead to the future. Indiana is so far behind in terms of its availability of alternative transportation needs. I would agree with the Senator on that. That if we're acquiring a right-of-way, that we need to make sure that, yes, there's pedestrian and, and light rail opportunities that go along with that. Okay. Thanks to both of you.